What's up guys, welcome to part 2 of the Hack and Slash tutorial series. In this video, we'll be working on setting up the finite state machine so we can prepare ourselves to start working with the combat system in the upcoming videos. So I made myself a basic test so to see if this whole state machine is actually working. And so the system I made is if I click my left mouse button, I'll get a print that says attacked. If I spam it, as you can see, I get a print string on the top left saying that I cannot attack and that is because I've made this test to where if I'm in the attacking state I cannot attack until the state has been resetted and so I made the system where after attacking there's a one second delay before I can actually attack and as you can see the system is working perfectly fine so if you guys want to pick up these files for yourself draw on patreon and let's get started so in the last tutorial video, we implemented a basic locomotion system for our custom character. Well, it's the UE4, so not much custom, but you can customize it as long as the you have the animations for that skeleton. And in this video, we're actually going to start with the state machine. We'll start coding the state machine and getting everything all set up for our next video where we start actually implementing combat. And so inside this, we're going to start off with defining all our different states, or at least some of it. So in the blueprints folder and hack and slash folder, we're going to make another folder called enums. We're going to go to blueprints and click on enumeration, call this en underscore states. Open this up. And we're going to add a, a bunch of states. The first one's always going to be a none. It's always a good idea to always have a default enum as sometimes you have a variable and its default value is another state that you don't want it to be and when you do checks you're going to get some errors. So our first state, well, we're going to start with attack, maybe dog, and prod death. We might add on to these states but let's just start out with some and go on from there. So let's open up our character here and let's make some functions, prepare for ourselves for the upcoming videos where we'll be actually using the state machine a lot. So first things first, let's make a variable and call it current state. Make this an e states. Let's make this, put this in the state category. Compile. Let's start off by making a function, call it set state. We're going to pull this out and plug this in. Now you might think, why are we making a function to set the state? Since we are have a variable, it's always a good idea to make functions to set your variables or set your uh, other clear set, reset your states. Um, because sometimes you might need to call these functions out of the player character. And if you're always accessing it, accessing it through a variable, it's going to be difficult and not very secure. So we're going to change this name here to a new state and we're actually going to make, a addition, we're actually going to make an additional check here on the branch. We're going to check if this new state is not equal to the state that we're already in. So we don't continue to set the state to the same state. So if our curve, if, our, if the state that we want to change into is not equal to the state that we're already in, then we can so let's make this not equal. So actually change this to e states. E states. This one's also e states. Is it? Yes. Hmm. Can we not do that? Not equal enum. There you go. That's why. Okay. Now we can plug it in. All right. So if our new state is not equal to the current state that we're in, we actually we set our current state to the new state. So we don't constantly set this state to the same exact state that we're already in and we need another function called get state and we're going to make this appear and under advanced make this const basically what const mean is that it will not change any game it won't change the game at all the will not set values it will simply do calculations and return a value without setting anything it can set local variables but I think if you do set local variables, it won't be constant anymore as you're setting and 
um, setting variables and it could change the state of the game. So that's something to keep in mind. But here we're simply just going to return the state that we're in to so return node. And we get our current state, plug that in. I want to call this return type or return value. Now the next function that we're going to make is a function to help us easily distinguish whether or not our current state is equal to any of the states that we shouldn't be in. Um, it'll be very useful once we implement functions that require the character to not be in a specific state in order to perform a certain action. So I'm going to call this is current state equal equal to any. And we're going to take an array of states, so states to check. These states and we're gonna make this an array so if this um, states to check is not contains so if it contains our current state so if any of the states that we list to check and it equals our current state then that means that our character is inside the state that we listed and sometimes we don't want that for example if we are wanting to perform an attack but we are already in the attack state we can list the attack state in this array and it'll automatically check if the character's current state is in the attacking state and it'll return a value for that so right here we're going to return now in most cases i'm probably going to call this function and pull a not boolean onto it but since this function is is current state equal to any we should just get a value uh, true if the character is in any of the states that we list or false if the character isn't So those are gonna be the three main states function that we actually gonna need. I don't think we're gonna implement anymore um, We could with some other function additional functionality like if a character enters a state we want to perform some action and For example if the character enters at that state we want to quickly perform the action and not have any delay to it That's something you can do with this setup uh, but let me give you an example of how the systems can system can work and Let's go on from there. So I'm gonna grab the left left mouse button input And off of this input I'm gonna Let's pretend this loss input is gonna be our my in attack input. So right here. We're gonna do a convert string And we're gonna call this attack, right? Like attacked Right, so if I give it a roll and I click my mouse, I'm going to get attacked. But if I continue to spam it, I'm going to costly attack. But animations aren't going to be like 3 milliseconds long. So I'm probably going to keep canceling my animations here. So since I don't want that, we're going to do a check here. So if I press, we can make a branch. And so if we attack we obviously want to set our state to attack so set our state to attack all right so if we are in the attacking state then we cannot attack anymore we need to wait until the state is no longer attacking so if we are attacking we enter the attacking state once we are done attacking we clear the state so right here in this branch we can grab this is current state equal to any node this node should be a peer value, peer function as we only, it doesn't do any change the state of the game, it simply returns a value. Off of this pin, we can make an array. And so if we choose attacking here, so this means that if our current state is in the attacking state, we should attack. Well, that doesn't exactly, it's not exactly what we're trying to aim here. If we are in the attacking state, we should not be able to attack. So gonna pull off a not boolean here so if the current state is not equal to attack then we can attack but if we are in the attack then we print string make this red and say cannot attack cannot attack so let's give it a shot so once I attack once I attacked but if I continue to try to attack, I cannot attack anymore because I'm already in the attacking state. 
And so later in the series, I'm going to implement a reset state function at, function where the characters will reset their function, reset their state so we can continue to perform actions. So to better demonstrate that for now, let's make a delay here. Let's make it give it like one second. And let's set the state to none. So simply reset the state here. And so after we attack, after one second, our state should be cleared and then we can continue to attack again. But if we spam the attack before this one second delay, we're gonna get this error message saying that we cannot attack because our current state is in the attacking state. So let's give that a roll. So if I attack, we can attack. If I wait for one second, click it again, we can attack. But if I start to spam it again, spam it, I get attacked. But if I start to spam it, you can see, it's gonna keep giving me the attack and then one second, during that one second delay, I cannot attack. After that one second, I can attack again once. So this is the basic idea of how the system will work. You can totally expand it, but for now, let's get this all. It's gonna be all we're gonna need for the state system. And we're gonna start implementing attacking and all that good stuff in the next video. So see you then.